whenever you get a word from the Lord, you never know how long you're going to have to wait until you know you're going to have to wait. Fashion Connect, and I'm coming to you today with another video in my seven part series, Snow Black and the Seven Distractions. If you have already watched the first two videos in the series, thanks a whole lot. If you have not watched the first two videos in the series, what are you doing? I need you to catch up. We don't, we don't want to miss part one or part two, so I definitely recommend after you finish watching this video, because the subjects are not necessarily connected, but after you watch this video, I definitely need you to check out the first two videos in the series. But what we're going to do today is jump right in to today's topic. Today's distraction is doubt. And we are talking about your homeboy Thomas. Thomas, you're familiar with him. He was one of the disciples that followed Jesus. But Thomas, you know, he got a bad rap. Today's study is coming from John the 20th chapter verses 24 through 29 and like I've said in all of my other Bible study videos make sure you have your Bible to follow along with today's study don't just take my word for it definitely dig into the chapter on your own and be able to follow along in today's video and what I'll do is on either side of the screen I'll just screenshot so you can follow along and I definitely recommend that you try out the U version Bible app and devotionals, various uh, translations and versions of the Bible. Definitely recommend it. I've been using it for several years, so definitely give it a try. I'll read today's verses. If my phone starts to make noise, just take that as phones doing what they do. Okay, and today I am coming from the New Living Translation, and it says, one of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wound in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly... As before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer, believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas explained. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. And again, that's John, the 20th chapter verses 24 through 29 of the New Living Translation. And so let's dive right into today's study. Thomas moments, we all have them. Like I said, Thomas had a bad, got a bad rap over the years. Anytime you hear a Bible study or a sermon on doubt, always, they always go to Thomas and it's always painted from the negative perspective of you, you have to believe have to trust you have to you know on and on and on however it's interpreted but if you really look at it you'll see that you know Thomas was being human he just wanted the same experience that all the other disciples had so whenever you look at a particular you know the fancy education says pericope of scripture which is just basically a grouping of verses you know together to uh you know, for the purpose of study, you have to look at that passage of scripture in the context of what's going on throughout the whole entire chapter. So if you look at uh, verse, if you start at the beginning of chapter 20 at verse 1, just to briefly go through, you see um, Mary is at the tomb, no Jesus. Where did Jesus go? He's, he's missing from the tomb, his body is not there. So Mary runs basically to tell the disciples that Jesus' body is no longer in the tomb. They run to go see for themselves. 
So once they see that Jesus is missing, they're also, you know, emotional and wondering what happened to him. So you jump down to verses 11 through 19, and then you find, you know, Mary is crying. She's very emotional. She's very upset because they don't know where Jesus' body has been taken. And then Jesus makes his appearance to Mary Magdalene in verses 11 through 19. Then if you go down to verses 20 to 23, you find the disciples. They're all gathered together. They're just kind of like hanging out. And then verses 20 through 23 is when Jesus makes his appearance to the disciples. So everyone is aware that Jesus is alive and doing well. His body was not in the tomb because he had risen. So during that encounter with Jesus with the disciples, Thomas was not there. So you jump down to our verses today, verses 24 through 29, and once again the disciples are together, uh, and this time Thomas is with them. And so what happens is Jesus appears once again, and this time he came specifically to meet with Thomas, so Thomas can have his moment. The disciples told Thomas, hey, guess what, Jesus is alive, we've seen him with our own eyes, and Thomas is like, cool, 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 that's great, like, that's great y'all saw him, I need my own experience. I need to be able to see the nail prints in his hand, the wounds in his side. I need to see it all. I need to see the same way you saw for yourself. I need to see for myself. And so you see in verses 24 to 29, that's exactly what Jesus did. So we can see that Jesus came directly to Thomas. All the other disciples were aware that Jesus was alive and doing well. He had risen from the dead, just like he said he would in three days. And so in this encounter, Jesus comes specifically and directly to address the doubt that he knew Thomas was experiencing. So in these verses, you see that Jesus tells Thomas to touch the nail prints in his hand, touch the nail prints in his side, and believe. Like I said, Thomas gets a bad rap. He just wanted a personal encounter the same way the disciples and Mary Magdalene had a personal encounter. And at the end of the day, Jesus knew his heart, Jesus knew his mind, uh, and so he pretty much came directly to Thomas to meet him where he was in that moment, to meet him in his time of need. And so my question to you today is, in what areas of your life are you struggling to believe? Do you need proof that God actually cares about your situation? We, we're human. We need that. And the Lord understands that. And so the disciples walk with Jesus throughout his whole ministry journey. They, you know, as he called them, you know, one by one to leave everything behind and come, you know, follow him. The disciples, you know, they listened to his teachings. They saw him performing miracles. They saw him standing up against, you know, the religious leaders. So they pretty much went through it all with Jesus. The disciples were there and witnessed Jesus actually crucified on the cross. And they knew that he was buried. And they were told by him several times that he would, you know, resur be resurrected on the third day and come back with all power in his hands. And so now the disciples had, you know, a personal encounter that it actually happened. I think we have to remember that the Christian life is not easy. And whenever you get a word from the Lord, you never know how long you're going to have to wait until you no longer have to wait. So I think we need to remember that it was easy to believe when you actually got yours. So whatever that word is, if it's the job, it's easy to believe and get excited when you're already on the job, you know, you've gotten a couple paychecks, you know, it's easy to believe and it's easy to believe when, you know, you waited for a while and you finally met the person that you believe God wants you to marry and you got the ring and you set a date and you're planning and working towards that date the date finally comes and you walk down the aisle and it's it. You got a certificate, it's legal, it's easy to believe then. It's easy to believe when you know you've tried a couple times and you finally have the baby that you've been praying for. It's easy to believe when you know you've been waiting for a while for your child to you know return and rededicate their life to Christ and it actually happens and you're, you're actually there to, to, to experience that change in their life. It's easy to believe then. But this passage tells us all about, you know, the times when you're the only one who hasn't experienced what they've been waiting for. So it's easy when the people around you have experienced, you know, their their breakthrough happened, you know, whatever they were waiting for, it, it, it came to pass. 
it's easy to believe that. But in the times that you're the only one who hasn't had the experience, uh, to that's that's the time where you need Jesus to move to come to you. The time that you're, you're experiencing doubt, that's when you need Jesus to come. The same way Thomas needed Jesus to come and allow him to have that personal encounter, you need that as well. So just keep that in mind. I think we need to remember that Jesus is not asking us to put on the good Christian fake face when it comes to believing in him and trusting in him. I believe that, you know, he is not expecting us to go through the motions and pretend like everything is okay. This scripture basically teaches us that Jesus wants us to bring our doubts to him so that he can meet us in our place of need the same way that he met Thomas in his place of need. So if you are in need of touching Jesus, the nail prints in his hands today, if you are in need of touching the nail prints in his side, if you are in need of just that extra touch from Jesus, that extra proof that you know he's going to come through, it's okay to bring that to him. He knows your heart, he knows your mind, he knows what you need, and he is more than willing to meet you in the place of your need. And so that concludes today's video the third part of the series snow black and the seven distractions again i'm your girl in nature with different by design where faith and fashion connect make sure you subscribe click the notification bell to stay tuned for the next video in this series thanks so much for watching and have a great day